10 key terms. key terms in archaeology. So, now we've learned a little bit about archaeology. We've talked about the history a little bit. We've talked about some of the early ideas in archaeology, some of the famous archaeologists. Now, uh, how do we talk about archaeology day to day? We need a couple key terms to make this all make sense and start to understand a little bit of the archaeological jargon. Now, do I like jargon? No. I hate it. But there are a couple terms that we do have to have a good feeling for in order to just understand the basics of the discipline. Term number one, artifact. What is an artifact? I find that this one's pretty straightforward. An artifact is a, an object that human beings made. It's that simple. An artifact is an object that human beings made. Watch this. Look at that. An artifact. <gasps> this is an artifact from today. Now, if I hold up something like a stone tool, that's an artifact of the past. You will also hear the term material culture, which I'm not a huge fan of because it just takes you down the wrong road. You're like, wait, material culture, what? But it makes sense if you think of it, material culture. It is a piece of culture that is made from material, right? So an arrowhead is a um, part of material culture. It's an artifact as well. That's all an artifact is, right? And usually I would also add that artifacts are portable, meaning you can carry them along with you just to make it a little easier. Key term number two. Potsherd. What is a potsherd? Well, when you're carrying your cup of coffee around and you're happy and your day is going well, and then you drop your cup of coffee and your day is destroyed, what's left there on the ground? Those are potsherds. Your coffee cup was obliterated into potsherds. So they are just simply broken pieces of pottery. The one I have in my hand happens to be around 1300 years old. Don't drop it. Right, so that's all a potsherd is. It is simply a broken piece of pottery. You'll hear potsherd, you'll hear potsherd. Um, potsherd is the more, I think, common way of saying it. But if you say it the wrong way, will we make fun of you? Totally. But it's not necessarily that right or wrong. Number three. Let's go with, and I'm gonna go with 3A, because um, three and 3A, because I said top 10, and there's actually 11. So uh, term number three, getting a little more difficult, assemblage. Term number three is assemblage. What's an assemblage? An assemblage is the sum total amount of artifacts found at a site. So everything you find at the site, that's the assemblage. King Tut, that we've already talked about, the assemblage of artifacts for King Tet would be everything found in the tomb. Everything, including the body, all of it. That is the assemblage. Now, term 3A, subassemblage. What is a subassemblage? A subassemblage is a specific portion of the artifacts found at a site. So if I'm really curious about all artifacts made out of gold, that would be the sub-assemblage of artifacts made out of gold. If I was really curious about, hey, what are the artifacts found at that site used for hunting? That would be the sub-assemblage of artifacts used for hunting, right? And that would be like arrowheads and spears and atlatls and that kind of stuff. So assemblage, some total of artifacts, sub-assemblage, a specific portion of artifacts found at that site. Key term number four, feature. <sighs> feature is always difficult, man. Like these first couple are pieces of cake, I think. Feature is always what, uh, what kind of can make my students a little, a little uh, question their lives a little bit. A feature, the best way to think of it is it's something that is destroyed when it's moved. It is, it is something that human beings have, have made 
that that loses its consistency when it's moved. And I know the definition is weird, but when you look at the examples I'm going to give you, then it'll make sense. So again, think of a, a feature as something that loses its consistency if you attempt to move it. The two most popular features in archaeology are burials and hearths, right? Burials and hearths. So now it starts to make sense, right? With a hearth, and what is a hearth? A hearth is just the remains of a campfire. And I swear to you guys, when you find a hearth, it's hilarious how much it looks like a hearth. Me meaning it looks just like that campfire that you put out a year ago. You know, it, it's, it's often some stones with some soot in it. Like this, this like thick thing of soot. And, and when you see it, you're like, oh, that's a hearth. Now, that is a feature because it loses its consistency if you move it. Meaning that you can't just have some special plastic, some magic plastic that you spray on the hearth. Ah, oh, perfect time to move it. No, you can't do that. The, the general public, I think, thinks that, that, that we as archaeologists have magic plastic. That we just sort of spray on this thing and, and take it all out as one. That can't happen. Think about it. If you're going to move a hearth, you're going to have to, like, take out the stones one at a time. You're going to put those in a bag. And then you're going to have to kind of scoop out the soot. And you can't recreate that later. It's gone. So that is a feature. And actually, it shows you how important it is to record stuff in archaeology. you got one shot on the feature, you know, and then when you move it, you ain't putting that back. Doubly so for burials. Burials are the other classic feature. Uh, once you uncover human remains, let's say you've uncovered it, there's the skeleton laying out right there. No magic plastic. Damn it. Dear DuPont, give me some magic plastic. Uh, there's no way to spray this out, out into one thing. You can't just move this burial to the museum. No, 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 no. Once you dig down on this sucker, you have to move it very carefully, one bone at a time, taking forever to record. And once you move the bone, you can never put that back, right? You know that as soon as you move this bone, the dirt falls in, and actually the bone is a thousand years old, so a part of it breaks off, even in the most gentle move, right? So it's a feature. Once it's moved, it's, it's consistency its organization is destroyed forever. Hope you took a photo. That's a feature. Other features like a gargoyle on a uh, side of a building, that would be a feature. You could chisel it off, but it ain't the same. It's, lose, it's lost all its context. That's a feature. Um, modern day, a basketball court, like an outdoor basketball court. That's a feature, totally. It's just spray painted on the blacktop, but you can't move that. You see what I'm saying? You could chisel it out, but it would just be a broken basketball court. So there you go. That's a feature. Um, where am I at my number is? I think I'm at number five of midden. Why do I do this to myself? A uh, midden is another one that's a bit difficult to explain. Um, the if you look up midden in the in, in like a dictionary or something, it will say trash heap or something like that, right? And and that's the easy definition for midden. It's true. A midden is a trash heap, and actually trash heaps are really good in archaeology because what people threw out in the ancient past that what you will actually find is there's a ton of artifacts there now. It used to be trash, now it's artifacts. But what makes Midden hard, Midden's easy in like a, like a historic site or something like, a, oh, a trash heap from 200 years ago. Yeah, it's just a trash heap. But when you go into, the, into prehistory and really old sites, thousands of years old, you're going to start to see that like you will find house pits in the Midden and you will find burials in the Midden. And if you didn't know any better, aren't you asking like, hey, so they buried grandma in the trash? They threw grandma out? Damn, these guys are harsh. No, uh, a midden is just, I like to think of it as um, kind of a strewn layer of artifacts across an area. You know, it's just a bunch of sort of broken up artifacts and leftover food materials. It's just this mix uh, that, that is a, a very sort of delimited area on the landscape. It's just this broken up bunch of stuff. 
on the landscape. And see, the reason why you will find grandma or a house in the midden is because some of these sites are there for so long. They're there for thousands of years. So if you think of an area where people lived, if they're there for hundreds of years, it's like they're going to put their houses here in 500 BC. They're going to put their trash here in 500 BC and they're going to put their burials here. A hundred years later, they built their houses here, they buried the people here, they put their trash here. Three hundred years later, their houses are now here, their burials here, and their trash is here. And after like 4,000 years, you just get this mix of stuff. And that's a midden in its most basic. It is just simply a mix of stuff. A mix of human stuff on the landscape. Uh, and, and so that's what you're going to find here in California. Many of the sites are California shell middens. And they're called that because the first thing you notice when you, when you find a midden is there's a bunch of broken up shell. Uh, because they ate a ton of shellfish and shell is very durable. There you go. A midden. A broken up mix of human stuff on the landscape. Number six. Structure. Structure is really easy. Structure is a building built by humans. I am currently standing in a structure, and it ain't too bad, right? A pyramid's a structure. Um, any modern building's a structure. A house is a structure. A dwelling is a structure. It's just this building built by humans. Sometimes they're for living in. Sometimes they're doing rituals in. Sometimes there's nothing inside at all. You have to be on the outside. That's okay. A structure is easy. Now, if I stood here for a thousand years, not only would I be dead, but this structure would fall in, right? Stuff would get old, stuff would fall apart. There would start to be like trees growing on it and vines and stuff. So when we find a structure often in the archeological past, we don't find a structure. We find number seven, a mound. A mound is usually a structure that has fallen down and has since had overgrowth on it and this kind of thing. So when you actually find them, they really just like look, look like little hills. In Belize, where I work, if you walk through the Maya jungle, man, a, a, a Maya site, and I think behind me, oh, Maya sites, you know, like this, this is a, a pyramid at, at Tikal, that pyramid, a structure, it didn't look like that when the archeologists came to it in the 1880s. It was covered with trees, covered with bushes and dirt. It just looks like a lump in the jungle. So if you don't know what you're looking for in the Maya jungle, you'll walk over a bunch of lumps and you'll be like, damn, there's a lot of hills here. Where are the structures? Yeah, under the hills. So what you notice is once you dig in, oh wait, these hills are made out of bricks. So mounds are basically ancient st structures that have fallen in. There are other varieties on this. You can get a mound if somebody lives in an area so long and they make so many foundations again and again to the same building that they kind of build on the same spot. You can get a mound like that. You can also get a mound um, that is made specifically to be a mound, like a burial mound where you just mound up dirt over time and you bury human beings in it. So there's there's variations on a theme, but there you go. A mound is a very common thing in, in archaeology. Which brings us to, let's see, no, oh. Number eight, a site. <sighs> if you want a term that my students get wrong, welcome to a site. If I say archaeological site, what do you want to define it as? Oh, I'll wait. Oh, I'm ready. What do you want to define it as? Watch this. Where archaeologists work. Right? That's what you get. An archaeology site is where archaeologists work. No! Now, that's not false. Archaeologists do work at a site, but that's not what makes a site a site. That's not the definition underneath it all. And that's what I need from you guys. A site has two things. Number one, it is a bounded area. And by bounded area, I mean it's a place on the landscape. It is an obviously defined place on a landscape, right? Uh, Pyramids of Giza. Giza is a defined place on the landscape. It's, you know, many acres large, it's huge, but it's one big archeological site. It is, it is an area that is defined, right? So that's part one of a site. Part two, human beings did something there. 
right? It, you'll hear like a bounded area where cultural events once took place. Two things. Any aspect of that I'm happy with. You know, if you, if you say something about boundaries and you say something about people of the past doing something there, that's what a site is. You realize there are many archeological sites that archeologists have never worked at, you know? So just saying, oh, archeologists work there, not enough. So bounded area, cultural events. That's what I need for a site. Notice I never said big or small. A site can be huge like Giza, right? acres big and that's one site a site could also be one spot and i found these before one spot in the desert a boulder just big enough for somebody to sit down on uh and all you find is the archaeologist you find a boulder and you find a pile of really nice obsidian or really nice stone just on the side of that boulder and it's all broken up little broken up shards of of tool stone, obsidian or chert or something really nice for making stone tools. Uh, I found this boulder, broken up stones, that's it. No arrowheads, no nothing. What was that? That was an archeological site, you know why? Because sometime a thousand years ago, somebody in that desert area sat down for an afternoon, they took out their tool stone and they made a stone tool. And then they made it, they were finished, and they went away. And guess what? That person, a thousand years ago, they were right-handed. I could tell that because of where the boulder was and where the pile was. And you just thought it was a pile of broken up stuff. That is an archeological site. It's really small though. It's only a couple square feet, but it is a bounded area, a couple square feet, feet, where somebody in the past did something for an afternoon. So there you go, that's a site. Which brings us, we're almost there. Number nine, right? Let's do uh, isolate, we'll do isolate. Isolate's easy. Isolate is just a uh, single artifact found out in the middle of nowhere by itself. I shoot an arrow a thousand years ago at a duck, I miss, the arrow goes into the dirt, I can't find it, I let it go, a thousand years later, an archaeologist finds it. That's an isolate, it's not a site, right? It's just a single artifact that you found out in the landscape. I've found these before, I found a, um, a, an axe once, an axe head, a stone axe head, middle of the jungle. Obviously somebody had been chopping a tree a thousand years ago, their axe broke or whatever, they lost it, and then I found it a thousand years later. So that's an isolate by itself. Common question, how many artifacts do you need for a site? The behind the scenes answer is three, meaning if you find two artifacts by themselves, that's still an isolate. If you find three artifacts, you could call it a site, but do you really wanna fill out the paperwork? I don't know. Really, you have, to, you have to think in those basic thoughts of like, was it a defined area where human beings actually did something? That's what matters. So don't worry about when an isolate becomes a site or not. Uh, just know that an isolate's a, a single artifact out by itself and a site is a real place where human beings did things. Which brings us to number 10. 10, uh, a culture area. Culture area is the largest area on the globe where a single culture once existed. And you, you've heard these cultural area places before. Egypt is a culture area. The Maya are a culture area. The Chumash are a culture area. How do you find, how, you, how do you define culture area archeolo archeologically? How do you define cultural area archeologically? You look for language, what they spoke. Guess what? In Egypt, they spoke Egyptian. And if you go too far south, they're not speaking Egyptian anymore and you're somewhere else. You're in a different culture area. The Maya area, where they spoke Mayan. So that's how you define culture area of the ancient past. It's by language. So a culture area like the Maya world will have many sites within it, thousands. And there you have it. Now you know how to talk like an archeologist. You can sleep soundly.